crypto can go like that, meaning right. uh, governments can regulate it, outlaw it, or it can be traced and certain other things. So, you know, uh, diversification is that, something I would I mean, emphasize. part of the argument, though, on crypto when it comes to the regulatory is or would be that it's already it's already reached escape velocity that that it's at such it's at a level now that there's that there's so much value around the globe that it'll be almost impossible to shut down. It's a little bit like Uber. I well, oftentimes uh, think about it like Uber, because when Uber started, people thought regulators were going to shut it down. But they grew so fast, so quickly that all of a sudden regulators didn't really have a choice. They just had to figure out a way to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, OK, Let, there are a couple of things in, in, in that. First of all, no, I think that it's easier to deal with now um, if you didn't. Let's step back. Governments don't want alternative currency. OK, because and throughout history, we see that they want control over the currencies for all the various things, especially when you have a successful currency. But if you have a lousy currency, that's what I mean. Like El Salvador. There's a, 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 well, I mean, or there um, since 1700, there have been about 750 currency. Only 20 percent of those are still in existence. And all of those have been significantly devalued at one point or another. OK, so we don't have to pick El Salvador. We can pick. The German, we could t we okay. can go through history and pick the most credible. It's the norm, right? And so, um, in any case, what I'm saying is that you don't want if you're holding a currency, or it's an awfully good way to print money and get the money around, which is going to devalue. When we talk about escape velocity of, of Bitcoin, one of the things you have also said, though, is that if it becomes too successful, governments will you know, ultimately shut it down. And so there, therefore, if you're right, you want to own it to a certain point of success and you don't want to own it yeah. after that. Look, How would I'm, you define that? Kathy Woods, who was on the stage with me, said that she believes, I believe her base case five years from now is that Bitcoin will be worth 10 times what it is today. See, I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me because of the following reason. Look, I'm no expert in this, but look, there is approximately, let's say, um, if you look, uh, use their gold as an example, and let's, uh, and you make the comparison. There, there's a certain amount of reflation, certain amount of those kinds of things going up to make a price increase. And then there's a certain market share that gold will have, that Bitcoin will have, and other things might have. If roughly speaking, there's about, um, if you take gold and um, you take central banks ownership of gold, I don't think um, they're going to be owned by, central banks are not gonna own Bitcoin for various reasons. I don't believe so. So, but if you take jewelry out of it and central banks, there's about $5 trillion in gold. Right. If you take it for Bitcoin, there's a bit less than a trillion dollars. So if you were to say, I'm just going to have a portfolio of those two things, right now about 20% of that portfolio, if you were to say the supply is there and you say, well, what's the right amount of that mix? That's going to be something like, okay, it's 20%. And given the volatility and the total attribute, I don't imagine that the market share is going to be much greater. And so the question is, does that market share rise? Or where do you think the market share is going to go of that? Because So right. you, you say what I'm saying, because if it was to go like 10 times as much, then the, what will happen is somehow Bitcoin not only will have to be greater than the total amount of money that's held in so that kind of non-fiat currency kind of thing, which, which seems like a, a stretch too far in terms of that. But it could happen if you have a problem with fiat currency as and as a percentage of one's own portfolio, that those things rise more, perhaps. But it's very much a stretch. And so when I'm looking at it, I'm saying, let, let's just I think, shouldn't we all pay, pay attention to those not fiat currencies or those things where you can take them from one place to another and that they're accepted around the world and that they're not debt and so on. So it's that category that I think is a more interesting conversation. Than, and, and do you have a diversified portfolio of those things and what is good balance? That's the more interesting question. You don't want bonds. You, uh, cash is a financial asset. You don't want to connect cash. You don't want a bond. It's going to have a negative real right. return. Like who wants bonds? You're going to have a negative real return. You want that? 
okay? And you're not probably going to get the price appreciation of the bond. There are two ways you can make money. It goes up or it gives you a right. good yield. It's not going to give you a good yield, negative real yield, and it's not going to go up much more when you get down to that, so you don't want the bonds. Stocks are have an asset. They're, they're a reflation asset through, throughout history. So there are things that you want. You want stocks. You want uh, gold, you want um, um, tangible assets, you want real estate, you want the things that are basically anti-money. And you particularly want those when there's a large portfolio of those. Let, think about it right now, through history, what we accumulate are a lot of financial assets. And the only purpose of those financial assets is to take those and convert them into buying things. Yep. And when there's a lot of financial assets and we produce a lot more financial assets, then uh, they're all claims for those other things. And they're pro And if you just went through the calculations to say, okay, how much financial assets do you have relative to real assets or how much are there? There's too many relative to right. the real assets. And so you want to get into those things that have more of those intrinsic values. Uh, a company is. So and that, those are the right. throughout history you see okay, that. Let me, let me throw a new wrinkle in, which was not in any of the history though. And I wonder we can even ask this room how many people in this room are, are trying are holding some form of cryptocurrency right now. And I know you own some Bitcoin. How many actually let's do that? How many people here uh, have some any cryptocurrency at all? What, what do you think that is? Eighty percent? It's like a lot. Okay, so that crypto arguably wouldn't have been a tangible asset historically. Well, where, where does that fit in the uh, realm of this? Yeah, it's uh, crypto is like a lot of historic currency. There are some that have intrinsic value. It doesn't have intrinsic value, but it has a limited supply. And as long as it's accepted for payments and so on and has a limited supply, if the demand grows more than the supply grows, it goes up and it serves that purpose. And it's and, and it's done a heck of a job of programming stood the test of time, meaning it hasn't been hacked and so on. Um, and so um, it's a viable alternative. And I think that probably, I think most of the people, and there are different reasons for owning it, but I think most of the people would say, is it a storehold of wealth that's limited in supply and maybe not controlled and is it a viable alternative to a fiat currency right. i mean like don't trust the fiat currency so how does it compare the fiat currency it and so is it an alternative gold kind of thing so there's probably an attraction in there and it has an attraction to me in there but then there's the question of it and you know like how many in, in the audience let's ask the question how many in the audience have uh some in gold i'm curious let's do that how many people have some gold? A lesser percent. Lesser percent. I'm going to go okay. 50% or less, 40 even. Yeah. yeah. So that becomes an interesting question. So if, like for me, I, um, I don't have a huge amount, but I, I have more gold than I have crypto. Okay. And so it's, and, and my basic thing is rather than make it crypto or uh, rather than make it Bitcoin or, or the other, um, I would say diversification is a good thing 